Okay, in this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use Cramer's rule to solve a system of equations. And you have to remember that a system of equations are two or more equations that you want to solve simultaneously to find out what the common answer is between the two of them. Another way of saying that is to find out where these two lines intersect. You know, what point will work for both equations. Just a quick background. You know, you can solve a system of equations by using graphing. So I could just graph these two equations and find out where they intersect. I can use a method called the substitution method, where I would substitute a variable into the other one and solve for the uh, remaining variable. Or I could use the elimination method. which is where you line things up, et cetera, et cetera. And we can go over that in another video. But Kramer's rule is like a fourth way of solving this. And it's, uh, it's actually kind of fun. It's not used too often anymore, but it can be one of the easier ways of solving a system. So I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step on it. Okay, now this is what you do. <coughs> when I see a system of equations like this, I want to line everything up in standard form. Get the x's and the y's on the same side. So I'm just going to rewrite the first equation and I'm going to rewrite the second equation using the standard form. So I'm going to put the negative 4x over here by subtracting it from both sides. And now everything's lined up. I've got all the x's together, all the y's together, and all the numbers together. The next step in Kramer's is to just take the coefficients, the numbers in front of the variables, and then the two numbers at the end. So I'm going to get 2, 3, 6, negative 4, 1, and negative 1, and create what's called a matrix. Now, it gets a little tricky from here on out. So what I do in this next step, if I want to solve for the x value of where these two lines intersect, okay, what I do is I cover up the x part of the matrix and I use 3, 6, 1, negative 1. And then I'm going to rearrange these numbers just a little bit. I'm going to move that 6 into the front and that negative 1 into the front. So my new matrix looks like this. 6, 3, negative 1, 1. I know that sounds a little confusing, but it's the pattern that works really, really well. Okay, So I'm going to say now that x is equal to, and I'm going to start finding, uh, I have to start crossing and multiplying some of these numbers. You have to start in the upper left corner. You go 6 times 1. And it's important that you follow this order, okay? And then you go minus negative 1 times 3. Okay, that's going to give me 6 plus 3, or 9. Now I have to find the denominator of this number, because there's actually a denominator here. And you do that by covering up this part of the matrix, and you use just the 2, 3, negative 4, and 1. So again, you've got like it's like a matrix divided by a matrix, okay? So the top part again, you just cover up the x to find the x, and you jump the numbers like we did here. For the denominator, you cover up those numbers and put the matrix like it is and you do the same cross-multiplying thing. You have 2 times 1 minus 3 times negative 4. That's going to give me, what, 2 plus 12, or 14. And that's the x value for where these two lines intersect at 9 fourteenths. All right, so let's do the y value now. So to solve for y, you do something kind of similar. To solve for y, 
I'm going to cover up the y values in the matrix. So I'm going to have two. I'm sorry, it's a little bit dark there. I'm going to cover up the y value. So it's 2 and 6, negative 4 and 1. 2 and 6, negative 4, 1. Now with this one, I don't have to do any jumping. I can just go ahead and start crisscrossing. I'm going to get 2 times negative 1 minus negative 4 times 6. That's going to give me a negative 2 plus 24 or 22. The denominator is the same that we already figured out up here. It's 14. So I'm just going to rewrite it as 14 because I don't have to do any more to it. And there's your answer. I actually can reduce that, can I? So I think I will. 11 over 7. So the answer to this matrix is, uh, excuse me, the answer to this system, these two lines will cross at, we'll call this step 6, 9 fourteenths, 11 sevenths. And there's your answer. That was kind of a fun way to do this. I hope you, uh, uh, you can play this as many times as you want to go over the steps, but uh, follow it step by step and you should be okay. Good luck. Have fun.